Hello everyone. I welcome you all to this lesson. Today I'm going to discuss on the topic Dear Mr. Examiner which is composed by Gareth Owen. So here I begin. And before that, let me ask you, have you subscribed to my channel? If you have not subscribed up till now, then please do and watch the video till end and press the like button. if you have like my video so let us start with our topic dear mr examiner which is composed by gareth owen first of all let us understand the title of the poem dear mr examiner dear mr examiner where examiner means person who takes our exam or teacher or professors who takes our exam in an informal letter written by a student in the form of a poem it is addressed to the examiner it is a humorous poem written from a child's point of view now dear children tell me how do you feel about doing exams have you even gone through exam and found that you could not answer any question at all what did you do then imagine that the teacher does not let you out of the examination hall so you just have to sit for the given amount of time what could you do in such a situation look around put your head down on the desk and go to sleep play games with your pencils and erasers i have seen children doing this when they finish the exam early hence the title of the poem is quite justified now about the poet gareth owen gareth owen was born in the year 1936 and died in the year 2002 He was a children's book writer, playwright and a British poet. He was not very good in studies, so he left the school at the age of 16. Later on, he wrote many poems on children and became famous for his works. He taught English and drama at Broadsley College. His poems were published in more than 100 anthologies where anthology means collection of writings by different writers published together in one book His first collection of poems was Salford Road and his second book was Song of the City which won the Signal Poetry Award and the welsh academy spoken poetry award as well as the national speak a poem award dear mr examiner is an informal letter written in the form of a poem addressed to the examiner now i'll tell you a short description about the poem in this poem the poet describes a student's thought in the examination hall when the child is unable to write the answers to the questions it becomes a very embarrassing situation as the child did not know the answer of a single question asked in the question paper the poet himself suffered from such a condition as described in the poem While teaching in a school the poet found out that the that none of the poems talked about the ordinary and simple plain things in life so he penned his own that is wrote by self he found none of the poem was from a child's point of view so he has written this poem So this is a poem about a child who went for an exam and did not know any answers. Do you think he must have 
he must had played with his stationery or put his head down but no he wo he has done something which no student of mine has ever done let's see if you can guess what did he do this poem consists of 10 stanzas and is a very simple poem and each stanza has four lines and it is an amazing poem if you are a student you will be able to relate the poem and i'm sure you will enjoy the poem have you ever appeared for an examination unprepared how did you feel what did you do it is very clear from the title of the poem that this poem is addressed to mr examiner it is a humorous poem written from the child's point of view it describes the student's thought in the examination hall when the child is unable to write the answer to the questions the poet himself suffered from such conditions as mentioned in the poem now let us start with the explanation of the first stanza and the lines are thank you so much for your questions i have read them most carefully through but there isn't a single one of them that i know the answer to now the explanation in this stanza the child who is a student is addressing to the examiner the subject teacher who has framed the question paper he is telling that thank you so much for your questions i have read them most carefully through that means he has read the question paper thoroughly and i am very much thankful to you for such question but i do not know a single answer of them a single one of them means the child is saying that i don't know the answer of a single question asked in the question paper the poem is about a student who has not studied for his exam and is reading the question paper he could not find the question whose answer he knew the poet has written this poem in a humorous manner that is to break the monotony and boredom and keep the readers entertained and happy as a youth academics were not poet's strongest suit and he struggled throughout his school years this poem reflects the difficulties and challenges he faced as a student so in this stanza the child is also facing the same difficulties and challenges after receiving the question paper and reading all the questions he comes to a point that he does not know the answer of any question as he has not prepared his lessons well and has come to appear in the exam without any preparation and is sitting blank in the examination hall looking here and there so children you should believe in yourself and all that you are know that there is something inside you that is greater than any obstacles education is the passport to the future for tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it today so children always learn your lessons well before you enter the examination hall otherwise you will also have to face the same embarrassing situation as the child is facing in stanza number 1 now the explanation of stanza 2 second stanza and the lines are i have written my name as instructed where instructed means directed to do something put the year the month and the day but after i finished doing that i had nothing further to say now the explanation 
In this stanza, the child tells that I have written my name as instructed. So, children, you very well know that when you that you when you get the question paper containing many instructions regarding the details which you have to fill in your answer sheet. Further, the child is telling that he has written his name, year, month, day, class, roll number, subject, and every detail. But after finishing up writing all the details, the further task was to write down the answers given in the question paper. But he does not know the answers. As he had written in his answer sheet the name, month, year and the date and after doing that, this he had nothing to write anything else. So just sat idle thinking what to do. So children, I would like to tell you a very famous quote of recipe for success that is Study while others are sleeping, work while others are loafing, prepare while others are playing and dream while others are wishing. So the success is never owned, it's rented and the rent is due every day. So children, study hard no matter if it seems impossible no matter if it takes time, no matter if you have to up all night, just remember that the feeling of success is the best thing in entire world. But here in this stanza, as the child did not prepare his lesson, after filling up the details, he had nothing to write as he did not know the answer. Now I move towards the third stanza and the lines are So I thought I would write you a letter fairly informally means an informal letter written in a fair way about what I can see from my desk here. From my desk here means from the desk in the examination hall of the school where the child was sitting and appearing in the exam and what it's like to be me. Now the explanation of the third stanza. In this stanza, the child says that it is clear that I do not know the answer of any question. So as he has to write something in the answer sheet, so he thinks, he plans, he makes up this mind to write an informal letter expressing his views about the exam about the pains suffering by a child so he tells that i thought i would write you a letter fairly informally about what i can see from my desk here now he is thinking to write about all those things which he can see from his desk from where he was sitting in the examination hall and was writing his answers. Maybe from a window which was there in the classroom, he will look outside and write about all those things or maybe he can imagine all those things. As he had nothing to write, so the child decided to write an informal letter to the examiner who had made such a good question paper. He started describing the surroundings and with his, Im with his imaginations, he penned down all the details which he could either see or imagine. Now the fourth stanza and the lines are, Mandy has written 10 pages. But it's probably frightful guff, where frightful means bad, guff means foolish and silly ideas. And Angela Smith is copying the answers of her cuff, 
where cuff means the end of the sleeves which looks like a band the part of the sleeves that fits around the wrist now the explanation of the fourth stanza in this stanza the child says about other children his classmates of his class mandy the boy has written 10 pages means he has written useless thing just filled up the pages with his silly and stupid and foolish ideas in his answer sheet and about angela smith she is copying the answers from her cuff in his informal letter he clearly tells that a student named mandy in the same question paper has filled 10 pages but it is a frightful guff which means it is foolish ideas and another student named angela smith is copying the answers of her cuff which means she has also not prepared herself for the exam and is cheating in his formal letter where informal letter means a letter written to relatives or your near and dear ones so in this letter whatever he observed in the examination hall he had written regarding mandy who wrote all useless stuff in 10 pages and angela who was cheating and copying the answers from her cuff that is the part of the sleeves that fits around the wrist now i move towards the fifth stanza and the lines are miss quinlan is marking our homework the clock keeps ticking away i suppose to anyone outside it's just another day now the explanation of the fifth stanza in this stanza the child says that miss quinlan is going to teach is going to each and every child and is marking their homework and the clock is continuously moving at its own pace the line the clock keeps ticking away means the constant movement of a clock in its normal manner he is thinking that for any people who is outside the classroom outside the school it is just the usual day as it comes daily and here as miss quinlan is marking their homework so now it is a very problematic situation for him because he himself knows the condition of his homework the teacher is checking their homework and the time is passing for anyone else who is outside this examination hall this day is like any other day means for him it is a special day due to exam as it is rightly said time and tides waits for no one in the same way time was flying very fast it seems like an endless day for him it was a special one as it was his exam time has a wonderful way of showing us what really matters an inch of time is an inch of gold but you can't buy that inch of time with an inch of gold so for the child the time was special but for other it was a casual time as he was not able to pass his time and every minute seems for him to be a longer hour of time now i move towards the sixth stanza and the lines are there will be mothers going on errands where errands means doing a job like delivering or collecting something grandmothers sipping tea unemployed men doing crosswords and or watching crown court on tv now the explanation of the uh, sixth stanza In this stanza the child says that there will be mothers going on errands where errand means to go out somewhere to buy something so the mothers have gone to buy something and grandmothers are enjoying by sipping tea 
and unemployed men where unemployed means jobless one who does not have any job or work to do are busy in solving crossword puzzles and some people might be busy in watching crown court on tv children crown court was an afternoon television show that ran in the united states from 1972 to 1984 so the child is sitting in the examination hall and he is imagining about all these things and is writing in this in his letter the students are in schools so their mothers are free so after finishing their household chores they have gone to buy something from the market and grandmothers since they have no work to do so they are also enjoying their tea the men who have no work are spending their time by playing crossword puzzles or by watching the famous tv shows the crown court on television now i move towards the seventh stanza and the lines are the rain has fun- finally stopped here the sun has started to shine and in the background in the sefton drive a housewife hangs shirts on a line now the explanation in this stanza the child says the rain has finally stopped that is it is not raining any more and the sun has started to shine brightly and in the back garden in sefton road where sefton road is the name of the road in liverpool england maybe it is that particular place where the child lives so he is specifying that particular road so he is telling about other activities performed by the people by other people he is telling about a housewife about a woman who is hanging shirts in the sun which was wet on the line or a rope or a wire so that it gets dried up fast so the rain has stopped and the sun's rays can brightly be seen shining in the sky and in the back garden in sefton drive the housewife is hanging clothes in the sun to dry maybe sefton road is a place where his school was or most probably he was staying in sefton road and was imagining all these things so after the rains the sun not only shines on all the trees and flowers but it gives the joy to everyone so the women quickly spreads the wet clothes so that it could be dried up fast now i move towards the eighth stanza and the lines are a class flies past to play tennis at the cathedral clock has just pealed a mover chugs backwards and forwards where chug means to move slowly up in the hockey field now the explanation in this stanza the child says about the other class who were moving towards the tennis field tennis ground to play tennis and the cathedral clock where cathedral refers to the main church of a particular area under the control of a bishop has made a loud sound along with it a mover chugs where mover means a grass cutting machine and chugs means to cut down noisily with difficulty so the machine is moving forward and backward making a loud sound and cutting the grasses that is trimming the grasses on the hockey field so all these things he is including in his informal letter so the child says that one of the class is going to play tennis and because they are not walking but running fast as the cathedral clock rings and in the hockey field some someone is trimming the grasses with a mower as a beautiful lawn doesn't happen by itself but 
with the help of a mower the lawn that is a hockey field becomes a perfect one now the ninth stanza and the lines are miss quinlan's just read what i have written her face is an absolute mask before she collects the papers in i have a sort of favor to ask now the explanation in this stanza the child says that when miss quinlan read the answers or the things which the child had written in his homework so her face becomes an absolute mask means no clear expression is shown on her face before she collects the question paper there were many questions which the child actually wanted to ask from his teacher miss quinlan but he could not ask the questions i have sort of fair to ask where favor means approval but was not able to ask so the child says that miss quinlan had just read what he is writing but he she has shown no expression on her face and before she collects their answer sheet the child wants to ask some question or some favor from his teacher it is because he was unable to write anything in the answer sheet due to the lack of preparation so he had many questions coming up into his mind but was unable to ask even one question he wants the examiner to do him a favor by giving him marks for having written the date and his name now i move towards the 10th and the last stanza and the lines are i thought your questions were lovely i have only myself to blame but couldn't you give me some marks for writing the date and the name now the explanation in this stanza the child says and he blames himself he is criticizing complaining himself that it was all my fault that i have not prepared for my exam properly i have not studied properly but no doubt your questions are very lovely very simple in case i had studied properly i would have answered all the questions but unfortunately due to the lack of preparation he can only blame himself now finally he is pleading making a request to the examiner to the teacher whose subject exam was on the particular day that can't you give me some marks for writing just the date and just the name so this poem is basically about those children who do not study properly and directly sit in the examination hall so i hope you all will not repeat the same mistake the same thing as a child in this poem did but will study hard and burn the midnight candle to answer all the questions given in the question paper now children i'll tell you about the theme of the poem dear mr examiner number 1 alienation or isolation the theme of the poem is how education alienates students who are different number 2 pleading for favor the child in the poem dear mr examiner argues that he has not written down a single answer in the answer sheet and instead has written only the date and his name and asks the teacher for marks for doing that number 3 smart child he is a smart student as he writes about all other students who are attempting the test doing some are writing well while others are cheating on the text while the teacher is busy marking their homework it is a poem from the perspectives of a smart child outside the examination system number 4 fallacy of education system it explains the fallacy associated with the examination system 
Miss, Mrs. Quinlan, the invigilator is correcting the and marking their homework instead of invigilating the students and amidst all such stuff the time keeps running away that means for him the clock is ticking and the time is passing and it seems like an endless day for him as for him the time was passing very slowly as he doesn't know any answer to the questions and was sit sitting idly in the examination hall without any work to do now children i'll tell you the moral of the poem dear mr examiner this is a beautiful humorous and amazing poem dear mr examiner is an honest outpour of the emotions of a child who is not prepared for the test and since the child does not know any answer he, the child writes a lovely poem to the examiner in the form of an informal letter which leaves the reader with a question a question about the utility of test and if passing a test is the only sign of intelligence it describes the child's nervousness while sitting in an examination hall each child is a unique creation of god and has an inbuilt multiple talent so it is not necessary that if a child is not good in academics but he he is true it is also true that he will certainly be good at other spheres in other fields talent is born not made talent is like electricity we don't understand electricity we use it it is like a flower it needs watering hence though exam is necessary but talent hits a target no one else can hit and genius hits a target no one else can see now the conclusion of the poem the poet gareth owen describes the child's anxiety through a letter which the child writes to the examiner the child thanks the examiner for setting the questions and admits in writing that he doesn't know any of it even after reading the question paper thoroughly he has written only his name on the answer paper the year the month and the date as instructed having knowing nothing he wishes to write an informal letter to the examiner explaining what all goes on in the examination hall the child tells that mandy has written 10 pages but doubts any sense in her answers as she has filled up the answer sheet with all the irrelevant matters another child angela is copying the answers written on her cuff and her teacher miss quinlan is busy marking their homework as the time is passing but it's just another day for anyone outside the examination hall busy with their daily routine works hence the poem explains the fallacy associated with the examination system the poem finishes with a note that note of the child who does not have a good opinion regarding the classmates the child also writes about mother grandmother unemployed men the weather cathedral clock and the mower one favor that the child asks of the examiner is to give some marks for filling up details in the answer script miss quinlan the child's teacher has just read the homework she has found the homework done unsatisfied unsatisfactory or she doesn't want anyone to know about what she ha- she was feeling inside so dear children education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world you have to go wholeheartedly into anything in order to achieve anything worth having so with these words i end my lesson do like share and subscribe my channel hope this lesson will be beneficial for you in your studies thank you